Hey there. So I wanted to show how to run Kali Linux directly from a live USB and give it persistence so that anything you do is saved in between reboots. Most of this should apply to other Linux distros too, but Kali is just what I'm using here. And to recap what a live USB actually is, you can take a version of Linux, put on a flash drive with something like Rufus, then when you plug it in your computer, you can spin up that new operating system using your computer's existing hardware. Then when you're done, you can just pull out the flash drive and boot back to Windows with all your files the way you left it. This is cool too since you can use that flash drive to run Kali on different computers and keep your work safe. This isn't new and there are obviously other videos showing stuff like this, uh, like this one from a YouTuber called David Bomble, but I've noticed that some of the ones I've seen leave out a couple things that I think would be pretty important for people to know, like how the USB you use can drastically impact Kali performance and how to check that, or dealing with Windows encryption, which is pretty standard now, or restoring your flash drive back to normal if you just want to use your flash drive as flash drive again. And I should note that the way I'm doing this isn't officially supported by Offset, the people behind Kali, but this is a way, and I've never had issues with it on a wide range of hardware. Offsec does show how to do it their way, but it's a bit more involved, and I'll just link that in the description in case you want to check that out. Okay, let's get to it. I'm really only focused on Windows 11 Home, but it works for Windows 10 Home too. The biggest difference for Windows 10 Home is that device encryption is actually much less common, so usually it'll actually be easier. For Windows 10, you can just use the same encryption checks that I'll show later. We need a copy of Kali Live, so I'll just go to the Kali website, select Live Boot, and I'll stick with the recommended option. I haven't tested the others. Next, just download Rufus from their official website, and I'll just choose the latest release. Next, we need a flash drive that is at least 8 gigabytes. Really, the bigger the better, since Kali will use over 4 gigs by itself. But there's also some special considerations with USB stuff here. Kali will be running directly off the flash drive, so if your USB connection is really slow, Kali's going to perform horribly, and it doesn't matter how good your computer is. Uh, there's a bunch of USB standards, and I like to shoot for a 3.1 or above, but if you only have one flash drive on hand, you might just need to work with what you got. However, if you have a few flash drives lying around, I'd recommend doing a quick benchmark check to see which one to use. Uh, interestingly, even if two flash drives are listed as the same standard, they can still perform very differently. Simple benchmarking is pretty easy, actually. Just plug a flash drive into your computer, and then take note of the drive letter it gets assigned to File Explorer. Then open a PowerShell window as administrator, and run WinSat disk dash drive and then your usb drive letter you can see my flash drives rewrite speeds listed in this output keep in mind that these measurements are in megabytes not megabits so for you just choose a flash drive with the highest numbers uh, just for reference this is the flash drive that i'm using and the last thing on usbs is to try to plug it into an appropriate port in your computer usually usb 3.0 will be blue or have something like an ss logo next to it you could have a really fast flash drive, but if you plug it into the slowest USB port on your computer, you're definitely going to be bottlenecking yourself. Okay, so by this point, I have my flash drive plugged in, and I downloaded Rufus and that Kali Live image. Next, I'll make the live USB. Just open Rufus, select your flash drive as the device, then choose that Kali ISO as a boot selection. And here's a very important part. Choose your persistence space. I'll just set it to the maximum. If you don't set anything for this, Kali will have no persistence at all. So every time you boot it, it will be a clean slate with nothing saved at all. Choose a volume name and the rest can be default. Then hit start. This may take a bit depending on your hardware. Next, I'll have two sections. One for if your laptop is encrypted and one for if it isn't. Since there are extra steps I think you should take if yours is encrypted so that you don't get locked out and potentially lose data. That might sound scary, but even if your drive is encrypted, it's pretty straightforward. And just a note. I'm only working with Windows Home, so it won't be the full bit locker. It'll just be encrypted with a slimmed down device encryption version. However, I'd always recommend trying new stuff like this out on a secondary computer just in principle. In a little bit, Secure Boot will need to be disabled in the BIOS settings in order for Kali to actually work, and that can cause issues when device encryption is active. For some needed context on device encryption, I have this article from Microsoft's website, and as you can see, if your initial computer account was a Microsoft account, Windows tries to enable device encryption automatically, but it won't if you had a local account only. Microsoft has been really cracking down and trying to force people to log in with a Microsoft account on Windows 11, so I have a feeling that more people than not will run into device encryption issues when they're trying to make a Kali USB and they're following existing tutorials, especially as more time passes and with Windows 10 support ending soon. So now I'm on my unencrypted laptop. I'll verify this by going to the search bar and typing device encryption, then go to this. If that didn't pop up for you, it likely means that Secure Boot is already disabled in the BIOS, or just that your computer doesn't meet certain hardware requirements for uh, device encryption, so the menu is hidden. And this would also be a sign that your device isn't encrypted. Here we should see a toggle that tells me if encryption is on or off. But to double check that, I'll open a PowerShell window and run it as administrator. Then run manage-bde status. No, look for your Windows drive, not the flash drive if it's plugged in. 
if your Windows drive is unencrypted, you should see 0% and protection is off. Now, if your device is not encrypted at all, you should be able to modify your BIOS settings freely and boot to Kali without any problems. But next, I'll show what it looks like if your device was encrypted using device encryption. And now I'm on my laptop with device encryption fully enabled. To verify, I'll go back to the device encryption menu, and then I should see it toggled on. However, you may see different results here, like the one I put on the screen now. If it says sign in to finish setting up encryption, device encryption isn't actually fully enabled, but your hard drive will still be encrypted. If you see this, technically you don't have to do anything else further since while your disk is encrypted, it shouldn't break Windows Hello. And it shouldn't give you a BitLocker lockout when you disable Secure Boot and boot back into Windows later. However, I'd still recommend that you gather all email information like I'll show shortly, just to play it safe. My main personal laptop is actually set up this way, and I've had no issues booting to a live USB on Windows 11. Moving on to double check the encryption status, I'll open up PowerShell as administrator again, then type manage-bde-status. Ignore your flash drive if it's plugged in, of course. But here you should see encrypted 100% and protection on. If your Windows drive has a device encryption fully enabled, and then you change secure boot settings, it can break Windows Hello login methods until you reset them. This means things like pins. However, it won't break password authentication. So for this reason, I'd recommend that you go to the sign in options, and then make sure you have password authentication enabled. Here you could also see the Windows Hello methods that I was referring to. So this is where you could potentially get locked out since later on when you're done playing with Kali and try to go back and log into Windows while device encryption was fully active, but only had something like pin authentication enabled, it fail. And in order to reset that pin, you need access to your Microsoft account's recovery email. And if you didn't have that, you're possibly out of luck. You're probably gonna have to reset your pin or whatever he Windows hello method you had, but you should still be able to sign in with your password if you enable that option. Next, I recommend that you go to add, remove, or manage emails in your settings. This should give you any emails linked to your computer. Note that this is separate than email saved to your browser. This selection is linked directly to Windows. So just verify you can access any emails present. Uh, next, if you had an Outlook account there, head to account.microsoft.com and log in. From there, go to security, then manage how I sign in, then make sure that you still have access to these methods. Pretty important. And this next thing will be the last prereq for dealing with device encryption. Go back to the PowerShell window running as administrator, and then run manage-bde-protectors-disable, then your drive letter, and dash reboot count 5. So your drive will still be encrypted, but this command will temporarily block security controls from locking your Windows drive when it detects that secure boot was disabled. And reboot count 5 is just there to give some leeway, so it's 5 reboots before it locks. If you don't do this when you try to go back to Windows after secure boot was disabled, your drive will be locked and you'll possibly see this BitLocker recovery screen. Now, if you need all your Microsoft login information, like I pointed out earlier, there shouldn't be an issue and you should be able to get past this fine, but it's a headache and we don't want to deal with it. Later on, after you're done with Kali and log back into Windows, to turn protection fully back on, you just run manage-bde-protectors-enable, then the drive letter. Now with encryption notes out of the way, we can modify BIOS settings. So I'll go to the BIOS by holding down the shift key and then restarting the computer from the GUI. Just keep holding the shift key down until the blue screen pops up. Then go to troubleshooting, advanced options, UEFI settings, and restart again. Now you might get a little menu here. I'll hit F10 to go to my BIOS settings. Your BIOS will look different based on your motherboard manufacturer, but usually the actual setting names are pretty similar. On mine, I go to system configuration, boot options, and then I enable USB boot, and then disable secure boot. Then I hit F10 to save and exit. This should bring me back to the Windows login screen. Now I'll hold the shift key once again and restart from the GUI. And then use the device. And then choose my flash drive. This should take us to Kali's initial boot screen and I'll choose the persistent option. Then it boots to Kali. We enabled persistence and Rufus earlier, so anything we do here will be saved to the flash drive in between reboots. I won't show it on camera from my end, because it would look pretty boring, but if you did what I did in Rufus, it should be working. To double check that our flash drive storage is showing up, you can run sudo lsblk-f, and you should see your flash drive with the storage space listed. There's going to be other partitions, but you don't have to worry about them. Unless you're specifically trying to modify things on your Windows drive, like resetting a password as I've shown in a previous video, I would just leave your Windows drives alone. If it was encrypted, you wouldn't be able to access anything on it anyways without providing a key. Well, that's it for booting the Kali with a live USB, but next I'll show how to go back to Windows and then restore your flash drive back to normal when you're done playing around with Kali.
So shut it off, hold down the power button for 10 seconds, then pull the flash drive out. Then turn the computer back on, and we're back at the Windows login screen. Now at this point, we should go back to the BIOS and enable Secure Boot again. If your drive wasn't encrypted to begin with, technically you don't need to, but you should still put things back the way you found it. And if device encryption was enabled, you should go back and turn on Secure Boot now. Remember, we ran that manage-bde command to temporarily suspend that hard drive lock, and there's only a few reboots left on it. So just hold shift, restart, and then follow the same steps from earlier. And now we should be at the Windows login screen able to sign in. If you see any issues here, like something went wrong with your PIN, you can just reset it now, or choose a password option if you have that enabled. And that's why I called out verifying your recovery email earlier and enabling password authentication if your drive was encrypted. Now I have noticed an odd quirk when resetting the PIN. For some reason, when I've tested it, I've had to click set up my PIN twice before it lets me actually reset it. I haven't noticed any problems that came out of this, and it just lets me reset it with my recovery options anyway. Once you get back to Windows, if your drive was encrypted and you ran that manage-bde command earlier, we need to re-enable full device encryption. So make sure you're in a PowerShell window running as administrator, and just check the status. On your Windows drive, you should see 100% encrypted still and protection off, but note that the remaining reboots have decremented. We can run this command to re-enable protection. Make sure you have the right hard drive value there. It should be your Windows drive, and not your flash drive if you still have that plugged in. And just a reminder, this command should only be ran after you had turned Secure Boot back on in the BIOS. And then I'll check the status again, and we see we're good. Protection is now on. So now we can return that flash drive back to normal. Note that this will delete any data saved on that flash drive. Just make sure you have it plugged in. Then right-click on the Windows icon and go to Disk Management. You should see your flash drive there. Make sure you don't touch your main drive or you can lose data. Right-click on any of your flash drive's volumes and delete them. You should see one large black block now saying unallocated. Then right-click again, select new volume, just leave size and drive letters default. Then on format, choose XFAT for your file system and choose a name. Now you should see your flash drive as normal in File Explorer. Well, that's about it for this video. If your Kali is running really slow, my first bet would be that your USB connection is the biggest problem. When I was making this video, at first I was using what I thought was a fast 3.1 flash drive, but Kali was barely running. So I ran that benchmark check that I showed earlier, and it turns out that the flash drive I was using was actually trash. So that's an easy thing to get tripped up on. If your drive wasn't encrypted at all, this process is way faster and simpler. And if I had to take a guess, that's probably one of the reasons why most other YouTubers only show bootable USBs on unencrypted Windows computers. But that's just speculation. You could just disable encryption if you wanted to make it easy, but that's pretty bad practice. It's very easy for a bad guy to steal all of your data off an unencrypted laptop if they get a hold of it. Either way, hopefully you learn something.